about a 300 and some acre farm. Uh, basically today I'm going to be wrapping up the boundaries. Uh, I got about a thousand acres yet to do. I've been playing around uh, with the boundary mapping and kind of getting a feel for it. That way I can show you guys how to do it on the John Deere display since uh, about at least a hundred of you guys have been asking me how to do this. So, uh, so basically today's video is going to be on that. Uh, after this farm, I'm going to shoot on over to Stark County and then I got to go way back over on the other side of the farm and uh, do some boundaries over there on those farms. So. actually the last field or well actually I should say farm that I have to boundary map yet uh, there's only about three fields left including the one I'm sitting in and uh, then I'll be officially done for boundary mapping for this year I'll probably go around and redo the boundaries again for next year so I wanted to show you guys since everybody's been asking me uh, mostly the guys that run John Deere displays uh, how to do the boundary mapping really you you don't necessarily have to do this with a john deere gator um, you can do this with a tractor uh, for the case guys out there uh, go check out hearts on family farms he does i think or has five or six videos out on the boundary mapping with the case displays so uh, if you're interested in learning about how to do it with the case displays uh, go check out his channel and i'll have it linked down below and uh, you can go check out how to do it with them. So, but uh, anyways, uh, starting from the home screen, uh, just to make things simple for you guys, uh, go to Green Star, and then it's under Mapping. So when you're under Mapping, just click the boundaries, and it'll take you here. Uh, all I have to do now is just switch the field. And then, uh, basically what I've been doing is exterior and interior boundaries. The interior boundaries, uh, they can be like a lane, a ditch. Um, they can be passable or impa uh, passable or non-passable. So like I said, a ditch would be non-passable, obviously, or a lane would be passable. So you can map those if you want. I've been doing those uh, only if they're really interior boundaries. Otherwise, if they're on the ex outside of the field, uh, they're no, there's really no reason to bound, uh, boundary map those at all. So the boundary offset, it's already inputting uh, the offset automatically. Uh, I'm going to change that because the gator is five feet wide. So I also have an implement width. The AMS guy recommended putting an implement width of the same width of the gator. So I have a five foot width for the implement and uh, Basically, it's just taking the offset of the implement width and splitting it in half. So it's half the width of the implement. So it's two and a half feet. But I don't want to drive directly on the very edge of the field with the tire. Uh, right here. Obviously, you would have to drive right on the very edge in order to get the precise RTK boundary if you want that. Uh, I'm going to set an offset of five feet that way I have a two and a half feet bubble so I don't have to drive directly on the very edge of the field to uh, get the line. And it's showing that it's the line's going to be uh, uh, created based on this tire or this outside width of the gator. So I'll go ahead and switch that to the driver's side because that's why I've been doing all mine on uh, is on the driver's side. And once uh, you have all that information in, you can go ahead and press the record button and take off and do the field. So I'll go ahead and map this field and show you guys what to do uh, once I have the field boundaries made. up 
into a corner of a field, what I like to do is, is I like to stop, pause, and uh, turn uh, in the direction that the next line's going, and uh, back up and line up where I was just at. That way, uh, there's nice square corners for the fields, for the boundaries. Necessarily, you don't have to do that. I just do it just to make it look nice, but you can round the corners off if you want to. And then you can just go ahead and press record and take off again. Obviously, you cannot pass through a woods, so you can, you can just leave that unchecked and do that. And then it will subtract uh, the interior of the woods, um, or that interior boundary, out of the total acreage. Also, those interior uh, passable boundaries will subtract acreage off of your uh, boundary totals also for the acres. So, it's kind of nice, that way you know exactly uh, how many acres you're actually farming out of a field. Uh, this was on a John Deere 2630 display, um, and I used a John Deere uh, Starfire 6000. Um, this is on a John Deere 825 Gator. Uh, if you want to see uh, how to mount the display, mount the globe, uh, there's a whole kit. Uh, talk to your local John Deere dealer about it. Uh, you'll uh, your salesman will probably immediately hook you up with your uh, uh, dealer's AMS guy. Uh, ours was fantastic. He showed us how to uh, do this, how to uh, use John Deere Operations Center, which is uh, why I'm doing the boundaries mostly to put into Op Center. That way we have definite boundaries of our fields. That way we know uh, an op center where our fields are located. It tells you all about how to do this in the book. Um, also doing uh, interior headlands, which you can do on here, or exterior headlands. So once you have an interior defined, it'll have that option up. Just I don't have any interiors uh, made. So uh, but you can make headlands on here. And uh, you can actually make AB lines on here if you don't want to take the time to do it. Um, while you're out in the field with the tractor. So say if I wanted to make AB lines for the vertical till, uh, I can go ahead and set an implement with a 30 foot, make AB lines based off of my uh, boundary lines, and I can make those and have those uh, repopulated then. Um, but I'm not gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll just wait and do it this while in the tractor, um, even though uh, I could very well do it with the gator. It's just, I'm not gonna take the time to do it today. So that's just a little bit more time uh, doing those. So, but anyways, this is just a really, really quick video on how to do this. Uh, I know I haven't been on YouTube for like two weeks, but uh, really nothing exciting has been going on. Uh, it's just more the more working on the planner, uh, getting seed delivered, and that's basically it. Uh, the other day when uh, snow came through, we did not get snow. Uh, we just got rain. A lot of you guys were messaging me wanting to know if we got snow. We haven't had snow since oh, the end of February. So uh, when will we be planting? Uh, more than likely uh, tomorrow's Easter, so sometime next week for sure. Uh, it's supposed to be in the mid, uh, mid 60s to uh, lower 70s, so uh, we'll be rolling this week. A lot of guys have been plant, uh, running in hydrus. A few guys have been planting beans. Uh, a few guys 
actually have a couple, uh, I'd say about a couple hundred acres of corn in the ground, I've heard. But otherwise, most guys in the area haven't turned a wheel um, just because we feel uh, like us, uh, the soil temperature has just not been uh, warm enough and uh, conditions just have not been conducive. So, uh, but anyways, look forward for a lot more content coming soon. It's just, you know, I'm not going to produce a video uh, just because I need to get a video out. I'm going to produce high quality content for you guys. That way you guys can stay engaged and uh, have a good time on this channel. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching guys and I hope you guys learned how to do this. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I'll try and answer them the best I can. Thanks guys.